Hello, welcome back. I am going to test a theory I have. So this is a little eight inch Frederick's canvas. It's taped in the back. Um, my, I have to be quiet because my husband's doing homework and I don't want to disturb him, but and my dog is anxious and walking around. But I was thinking the other day, so it's been a minute because I haven't done it, done blooms in a week or so, but I was thinking the other day that I think subconsciously when I blow my blooms out, I think I pucker my lips instead of like, <laughs> I know this sounds super weird, but instead of like keeping, like you don't want to necessarily purse your lips because it's going to narrow your blow. And I think subconsciously I like narrow my lips, like you're going to whistle or something. Anyway, so my thought was I need to practice subconsciously not doing that. So that's what I'm going to do today. And so it might sound really weird. And um, hold on a second, I'm gonna get some gloves and a baby. So I'm probably gonna be messy. So I figured I need to use up colors. So I'm gonna use some that I've had mixed up for a bit and use some that I haven't had mixed up for that long. And um, <clears throat> I just, I tried not to overthink the colors too much. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use, <laughs> the other weird thing is some of my cups have colors on the top that I don't think are right. Like this, I don't think wisteria is this color. So I don't know what this color is. I'm gonna try to fact check it and put it in the description box. Maybe it is wisteria and maybe it just looks purple in the jar. Um, anyway, <clears throat> the only bad thing is we're gonna have bubbles because I just stirred some of these up. So this is one of the ones I need to use up that is pretty old. This is Beach House Blue from Color Art. This one is not old, I just like it and want to use it. And I'm gonna run out of it, I use it so much. This is fluorescent blue-green from Color Art. It's a Vivid Intense, it needs to be thinned out. <clears throat> so it's a Vivid Intense, um, which is a, the Fluid Art line from Color Art, and I love them. So I'm gonna thin that out with a little Josanya. I use it pretty often, I need to just mix up a big tub of it. Um, <clears throat> oh, it's still thick. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm just going to thin that out a little bit more. Anyway, um, I have a lot of stuff in the description box for you guys. I'm sorry, my throat's getting froggy, of course, now that I've decided to talk. Anyway, I have a lot of stuff in the description box for you. It's still a little thick, but we can make it work. Um, for Color Art, I have a 20% off coupon code using Mandy1120. This is the color that's supposed to be Wisteria. I think this comes from the the frosted sorbet set, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna have to check my facts. But I like how it's like a really shimmery, shifty bubblegum pink. <clears throat> and the thing is full, so you know I need to use it. This one is blue ice. This is from the frosted sorbet set. So what's really cool about that set is they're very icy and frosty. This one is also a little too thick. So if you put them in one of the layers toward the bottom as your blooms spread out, these pop with so much, so much sparkle, especially after you resin them. So um, I don't like to put them toward the top because the particulates in them are so large <clears throat> that it can be difficult for your cell activator, but I do like to put them near the bottom. So this is still a little thick, but we're gonna drizzle it, so it's okay. <clears throat> I say that, but I'm trying to work on my blow. So I probably should be careful about the consistency. Australian Red Violet, I didn't really want to leave her out, you know. She's one of my favorites for a reason. And this is Thalo Blue from Color Art, Vivid Intense. So those are our colors. Let me put my paint down. This is a mix of Valspar 2000 in eggshell and PPG Multipro in eggshell. I didn't mix them for any special reason. I just had a little bit of each of them, and so I combined them. That's too much paint. Hold on. <clears throat> oh well, what's done is done. Now it's really too much paint. I'm going to have to tip some of it off. The reason being is if you leave too much in the middle, your stuff's just going to like dig into there. So unfortunately, the pillow is just really thick right now because it's the bottom of both of those cans. And um, I find that the bottom of the can of paint is kind of sludgy and unfortunately has a lot of bubbles pop those real quick. 
Unfortunately, I can't keep whacking that on the canvas because I'm sure that that's super distracting for my husband. Okay, so I'm just gonna help this a little bit. I really like these little round canvases. They are expensive, but they're pretty great for blooms. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the Beach House Blue. I am a little nervous about my paint being too thin, so I'm gonna drizzle um, as opposed to puddling. Well, that's not true. I'm gonna, I, it is true. It's sort of true. I don't, what I don't want is to have a huge pile of paint that makes it difficult to blow because then I won't be able to tell if what I'm focused on is actually working or if my paints are just too thick. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So we're gonna do this mystery color. Could be wisteria, could be something else. We'll find out later. I really like it. I can tell you I've never used it, I'm pretty sure which is, you know, oh, that's back. I sure mixed up a lot of it there. <laughs> I just drizzled it like a crazy person. Like, I still want this guy to show. Oh wait, that's the wrong guy. Beach House Blue, I still, I don't want you to be hidden completely, you know? Okay. <clears throat> and anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. I don't know when this is gonna come out, so I don't, I hesitate to say, you know, this is going on and this is going on. Okay, now blue ice. That'll be a fun one to peek through, like booyah! And it's very transparent, so the other colors should still play well with it. <clears throat> All right, now we're gonna do um, a little phthalo blue, which may need to be thinned down, but oh no, it's kind of okay. Halo blue. This is kind of a weird color combination, you know? <clears throat> but that's okay. And I always tend to pick some aqua or turquoise color and some version of red violet, whether it's a burgundy or... <laughs> and I'm like, I do that a lot. And I'm like, it's okay. That's what I like. So this is the fluorescent blue-green, which I love. And I'm going to have to have more of it because I use it all the time. <clears throat> The red violet tends to take over, but I mean, wouldn't you if you looked like this color? I think everyone, if they were the red violet, would be like, I'm here, check me out, you know? So, <clears throat> maybe I won't be too crazy with the color, you know? All right, <clears throat> now I'm nervous because I want, I want my, I want this to be like the answer of all of my bloom troubles ever. That's just not that easy, right? But, all right, and for some reason, my center keeps shifting. I don't see any reason for my spinner to be off, but something does seem to be off because it happens almost every time now. <clears throat> okay. Oh, I'm nervous. Okay, cell activator is with Australian Floetrol, and I'm using M. Graham paint. I get it from Blick, and I have a link to Blick in the description box. It's also where I get Amsterdam, and you can also use Amsterdam. Word on the street is try arts a great cell activator. I haven't tried it yet. I'm probably gonna want to though. It's very expensive because it's a Canada brand. But I'm gonna need to know. <clears throat> okay. So I do also have a discount code for Aussie Floetrol in the description box with Pixel Paint Designs using Mandy10, all caps. So don't forget to check out the box. Okay. I'm so nervous. This is probably too much, but. Uh, why do I feel like I need to put more? <clears throat> okay. That's hard.
<coughs> okay. This is a weird cell here. I'm going to want to get rid of that. Okay. Better? Um, but that was really hard. It's, it's like you, you can't move the paint as easily without pursing your lips. So you tend to like want to gravitate toward that. But I think it did help get rounder petals. I just had to work a whole lot harder for it. So let's work on the center. I'm tempted to mess with that, like put my finger in it because it's going to be an ugly cell. But that happened because I extended the blow in some places. And man, I'm really tempted to just put my finger right there and see if I can't narrow it a little bit. That actually worked a smidge, but that may not work beyond that. I better leave it alone. <clears throat> Sometimes the things that you want to mess with the most when you're in the middle of everything, once it's dry and resined, you're like, that wasn't a big deal, you know. But man, if you're not tempted to obsess about it in the middle of the painting... And sometimes even when I do voiceovers and I edit videos after I've done the painting, I'm like, you shouldn't have scraped that or, you know, why were you obsessed over that? That was not a big deal. So sometimes we're just too close to it. Unfortunately, I kind of want to take a stab at extending this again. But I don't think that's going to work. Okay, I'm going to scallop the edges just a little bit. Um, just because... For once, I don't have those weird fingerling areas because of how we improved a wee bit by broadening the center. Um, so we're going to have some opportunity here. Because what I found is I wasn't doing as good of a job um, enlarging the circle, but I definitely got better cell definition out here. Um, so... You know, I, th I think I'm going to have to work on it, but, and I think the smartest way to practice it would be to take like two or three colors max, keep your puddle small, and work on it, because the more paint you put on there, obviously the harder you have to blow to get to the bottom, and to get all your colors to show, but this weird color combination is kind of cool. All right, let's spin it and see what happens. My paints are thick, I can see. Okay, um, lots of stupid little bubbles. The center's gonna look a little strange just because there's too much cell activator in the center still. Um, but it's okay. Just a little eight inch guy. And unfortunately all those stupid bubbles are coming up from when I tilted the pillow off. Um, I feel like bubbles are like always after me. I'm tempted to move this canvas this way a little bit, but I think it's a little premature. So, but in a minute we probably need to. Just a little. It's always wanting to throw the design in one way or the other. We just want to help it get there. See, if, even though there was all that paint, we're still having a hard time getting to the edge because of how thick it was. All right. I think, like, I know that didn't 100% solve the difficulty blowing, but I do think I'm on to something. Because if I watch Shelly blow, she's, she's making the circle bigger and then pulling her head back to broaden her, the scope of her breath. I wish I was as skilled as Lisa to turn sideways and stuff. I need to practice it more, but every time I do, I try it. It doesn't work for me, and I think it's just getting the hang of it. Um, but you know, everybody has their thing, but that works for them. So I'm trying to figure out, am I a keep your head in one spot and pull your head back kind of a person? I don't know. Unfortunately, all these stupid bubbles are popping in the lacing and creating these ugly measles. I hate that. Okay. So I'm trying to pop them before they get to be too cantankerous. <clears throat> I 
Okay. <clears throat> See if we can't get enough off. Unfortunately, a lot of my color fastness is waning because of having to spread it out too much. Like maybe I, I may have gotten rid of a little too much pillow paint because I would like to get some of those weird edges off the edge. But it's taking some serious effort. <clears throat> I'm gonna give it a pretty aggressive spin here. Now this one, this one is cute. It's not gonna be, the middle bothers me. Um, and like if I let it, I'll obsess over it. But once it's resined and you see all of that sparkle, it's gonna be pretty amazing. Okay, so we moved this guy over here to get him off the edge. And I think we succeeded for the most part. If I cover up the, if I cover up the, um, the fallout, I like it. Unfortunately, to have to have to get it to the edge, we're we're starting to get like wobbly cells. I don't like that. I should have just left a little pillow paint on the surface um, and spread it out a little bit better, so it wasn't all in one spot. So now I'm gonna shift it a little bit more this way. Let's see if I can't get this part off. <laughs> oh, I knew that was gonna potentially happen. Okay. Um, because I had wet paint on the edge here. That's terrible. All right, let's see if we can't. <laughs> Poor little guy, you've been traumatized already. All right, we may end up going again because of that. All right, and I was having a pretty decent go with that one. Do you guys gasp when that happens to someone else? Like when you're watching the video, I always go, <gasps> like, you know. Okay. Let's see if you're gonna be an RIP bloom or a rescue. Okay. Uh, we might be able to save him. Let me see. The only thing is he's all wonky now. I don't know, you guys. Should I go again? I, I don't know that I... Like, we made progress, right? No doubt. Um, but I don't know if I should let him dry or pour over. Because... Um, the sides are... <laughs> The sides are still a little, uh, let me look at it for a second. Like there's so much about it that's beautiful and it's, you know, it's just a little eight incher. Um, but what bugs me is we don't have a lot going on in here. Oh, I'm so torn. It feels like the first bloom after you haven't bloomed in a few days is like a challenge. Uh, you guys might be mad, but I, I think I am gonna go again. And the challenge though is, if you go again and then you don't like that one as much, then you're like, I could've saved this one. And we've been through so much together. I mean, he flew off the thing already. Uh, okay, I'm still gonna do it because I'm looking at it and this, I think if the center was better, I would like the whole thing. Um, so I don't know, let's just, let's just go again. RIP little guy. We already have paint on the canvas, so we probably won't have as much trouble getting that one to the edge. I don't like what this does. Ugh, but look at all those stupid bubbles. Urgh. Okay. I can't whack the thing, because that would be noisy. And there is still quite a bit in the center. So, let's go. Sorry, little bloomy. Okay. 
Every time I touch that paint and move it, it bubbles. It's like, don't touch me. Okay, that part should probably come off the edge anyway. All right, let's give it a go. All right. So, you better not disappoint me, you bloom. I better not regret giving you a mulligan. Okay, okay. Hope you guys are cool hanging in there. There's just enough of this paint left. I think this time I'm gonna put this bashful, not bashful glue, that's a different color. Icy blue or blue ice or whatever here. I think it will do better. Because those particulates are, they mean business, like they're, they're large. And if you get them too close to the top, it really, it messes with you because it makes you think that your paint is like grainy or something, when it's probably not. Okay mystery color that has a wisteria name on it might actually be wisteria i don't know what wisteria is supposed to look like <clears throat> it's pretty i know that and it's very shimmery okay now blue green fluorescent blue green that is i also noticed we were missing some color saturation in the middle which i I think that's because of how I was trying to deal with that cell activator at the end there with the turkey baster. But I want to make sure we have some good color in the middle. So this is the phthalo blue. Ooh. <clears throat> Ideally, to help with your color fastness, you should most of the time, I sure caked on the blue there, put an acrylic paint at the bottom because pigments are a lot more transparent so that will help with keeping better color um, but I just don't always follow that rule I do more, more often than I don't okay red violet now I'm nervous again because I gotta do the blow all right here we go I did have a wee bit too much cell activator, but not so much that it was like way excessive. It was really more how I blew it out than it was that I had too much. <clears throat> so what I think I'm gonna have to do is purse my lips a little bit to move this target and then focus on not doing that. Much better, you guys. Okay, that's really good for me. <clears throat> okay, so this is what I learned. You have to kind of purse your lips to get it going and then adjust, adjust, but you have to be cognizant of it. Otherwise you keep pursing. And by pursing, you guys know I mean like puckering, right? Like you're blowing the trumpet or something, like puckering versus you know, um, it's hard because you can't see what I'm saying when I, it's happening. Um, but, okay, let me spin while I talk, but you do have to purse your lips to get some of the, the distinct areas blown out. Like that. Because often what you're trying to catch is narrow. <clears throat> But that was definitely um, better, and my petals were wider, which is how I know that I'm right about that, because normally, look at what I did here. What's done is done. Anyway, let's just spin it. 
<clears throat> normally my petals are narrow and that's one of the things that drives me nuts because like I might have a really beautiful bloom and out toward the edges it goes narrow and weird and look my color saturation is better on this one so let's just hope I can continue as we blow this one out my design is already trying to shift the other way which is driving me bananas so I'm going to try to help it before we spin too much and it compromises the cells normally when I do my turkey baster in the center to open up the the cell activator normally I don't have ugly cells formed but those right there are ugly so I if I had it to do again I would have left that alone because it wasn't that bad and now I have these weird cells but they're fine and okay let me deal with these I'll be right back okay I'm back let's keep spinning We've got a couple things we need to get over the edge and then I'm happy. This is probably one of the best, I might have said that before, but this is probably one of the most even blooms I've done blowing with my mouth in a really long time. And I'm very happy. So now I'm gonna wanna keep doing blooms all night and I obviously can't do that. So, but if that's happening to you and you're like, I get all these narrow, dumb little petals, Pay attention to how you're blowing because I think we just naturally, oh, I just got house paint in my pink paint. Uh, I think we just naturally tend to do that. You know what I mean? Um, and I just want to encourage you guys, if you are doing this technique and you're frustrated, look, it is a hard technique, but it is doable and it just takes a lot of practice. And even for those of us who have done it for a long time, like me, there's still things that we're like, I wonder if, you know, and um, so, these stupid bubbles. So what I noticed with this one, and this may be redundant, but um, I'm the kind of person that when I watch people, this stuff really matters to me. Like, share your failures with me, you know what I mean? So what I noticed is, when I started to blow it out, purse your lips just enough to enlarge that and then start pulling your head back and start relaxing your mouth so that more air is coming out and it's, it's coming out broader, you know? I think you understand what I'm saying. So, and then when you find yourself blowing out the blooms, you can kind of watch where your paint's going. Um, and it, it tells you basically if you're doing it right. I mean, I know that's easier said than done, but it, as you're watching that petal, if that petal starts to narrow, self-correct, right? So um, I, I know that that is kind of stressful when you're in the middle of it, but if you start to notice that it's narrowing out as you're blowing, adjust. Either you're not pulling back enough or you're maybe pursing your lips out of stress or something. So let me bring you down. The color combination in this one is so much better. Under resin, I can't wait for you guys to see it. And I'll share it as a short after I resin it because it takes me a while to get that done. But all of these frosty places under resin are going to be like, Pew. Um, but anyway, there's still a bunch of bubbles, so let's hope it dries nice, but the color saturation is better. It's definitely a wise move to put the frost, frosted sorbet color down second instead of third, so that it was a little closer to the bottom and it's still peeking through. Very lovely. So let me give you a close up. Thanks for hanging out. This okay, so pretty happy with this. This stuff in the middle is from the turkey baster. It also didn't help that I had color underneath before we did the bloom, so I probably shouldn't have done that. But anyway, I think she's beautiful, all things considered. Look at the frostiness of that color. You see what I mean about the particulates? Look how big they are. Um, they really look great once they're resined. But I think, I think that this is really pretty. Um, really pleased i'm really glad we redid it i was afraid i was going to regret it and be like well at least the first one was not a total loser but this one is a winner i'm happy so and the fuzziness we have here as it dries it won't look so crazy this pink color this one right here that has the house paint in it it almost has a green shift it's very cool whatever its name is maybe it is wisteria but anyway, thanks for hanging out. I know this has been a long video, but let me know what you think. Was this helpful? Or maybe you guys are like, I already knew that. Um, it was helpful for me. So, yay. Thanks for watching. Bye.